Hello and welcome to the Arizona Trail 800 Mile Showdown 2023 edition. We're excited to be back again. We wanted to do a kickoff show today as this year we have Michael McKnight taking on the Arizona Trail again and he's going to be going south to north this year and we are excited. I'm here with my co-host Bryce Brooks. Happy to be here. As you know, last year we did these daily updates as Ben Light and Michael McKnight both raced each other along the Arizona Trail, and we're joined today in studio with both of them. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) You guys are right now on your way to the Mexico border. You're going to be starting this Friday. Correct. And heading northbound. So we wanted to take a few minutes, chat with you guys give everyone an update like you're back ben this year you're just supporting mike um could you talk a little bit about i don't even know where we want to start i feel like there's so much we could talk about but maybe why are you coming back so when i was out here uh, heat training for cocodona earlier this year i picked up ben from the mesa airport because he came to crew and after we left we were driving um what would that be east and I had an amazing view of the superstitions, oh, yeah. the four peaks, and then I never know how to say it, the ma- mazel tals. Mazel tals, mazel tals. I would mix it up. Mad as hells. Mad as hells. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I had a big old view of those, and I told Ben every time I looked at them, my heart just started beating so much because those three ranges absolutely destroyed me last year. And I don't like having that feeling, so I need to like conquer this trail so i can get that out of here (laughs) for viewers out there that are tuning in that are not familiar with what happened last year ben can you run us through the concept of what you guys did last year and then walk us through the result a little bit yeah um so last year we both of us were eager to go after the arizona trail uh, fkt so we had come up with a kind of a concept together on a prior run and and we thought it'd be an awesome idea to be able to race one another or do a race where one individual was going in op uh, both individuals were going in opposite directions and because of the azt's fkt scenario some some trails have directional fkts whereas azt is a non-directional you can go north to south or south uh, south to north and a lot of people choose the direction based on the time of the season. So we thought it'd be a great idea to utilize this concept and and both go after the FKT at the exact same time and uh, go in opposite directions. So last year we, we didn't know which way we were going to go up to like a five-day period beforehand. And so we decided to, we did a coin toss five days before. The winner of the coin toss got to choose their direction. The loser of the coin toss got to choose the time, the start time. And so last year I happened to win the coin toss. I chose south to north after all the information that I gathered from prior through hikers and information I thought they'd be the best, best way to go. Mike got north to south, and uh, he got to choose the start time at uh, – 8 a.m. and uh, is it 8 a.m.? Yeah. yeah, I would rather have picked like in the middle of the night, <laughs> just to screw just to screw him over, just to screw with him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just, you know, that, so that was the concept, and and uh, so that was like the the birth or the the concept of the the whole showdown of FKT showdown. So we had a lot of fun last year. Bryce and I did a check-in show with it was predominantly your crews would check in with us. We would check in with you guys when we could, but we did it every morning. We updated everyone on the progress as the dots were moving across the screens towards each other. Um, It was, it was a lot of fun just to have a chance to highlight the incredible Arizona trail. You know, one of the most diverse trails in the U S one that we've both done. Um, So when we heard you're doing it again, we wanted to step in. So um, like I said, we're going to host about a half hour long show each morning. It's going to be 9 a.m. Arizona time, um, except for this Friday. We're going to start at 7 a.m. That's when you're going to be hitting the trail. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about briefly last year, how did things end up? And then we're going to get more into this year. You want me to start? <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, so I, <clears throat> unfortunately last year, like my three weeks to a month before I, I had a pretty bad ankle sprain, um, like worst I've ever had. And uh, Ben hooked me up with a doctor in Utah that did ozone injections. I did like six and it like really sped up the healing process. But going into it, like I wasn't a hundred percent recover or healed from that and so like I had shin pain I had calf pain from what I understand you guys had a pretty terrible monsoon season last year uh, yeah yeah like strikingly different from this year yeah that's what I've heard which yep. is another reason I'm back this year <laughs> I mean I'd made the decision like two months ago to to do this so but um so there's a ton of mud up north like it was not helping my ankle situation uh but I did make it I mean long story short I tried approaching this like a 200 where I was pushing the boundaries of sleep and I got, I don't know, like seven, eight days in and I just like had like nothing in the tank. Like I've never felt that depleted in my life before. And so I got to the top of Mount Lemon and for anyone that's familiar with that, there's a, there's a place up there called Summer Haven, Summer Haven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's like a two mile section of the Arizona trail that's actually like a paved road through this area yep. it's all downhill like it should be like the most runnable section in the entire course and like I could barely maintain like a 20 minute mile I was just so depleted and so I got to the trailhead where Ben <laughs> informed me is this was days before I got here but he was just like this section's going to be rough like be ready for it basically and if I, I felt that if I could only maintain a 20 minute mile down a paved road that would be out there for another week and I was like so close so I, I essentially called it and that was roughly miles 600 or so yeah I'm getting like emotional just <laughs> hearing you talk about this yeah. <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty emotional which is why I'm back like it's a it was a terrible feeling but I'm feeling a lot better this year so I feel a lot more confident about it and then hopefully the lower monsoon season is gonna help out with that too I think that'd make a big difference like for sure just i mean i think it i think i'm not positive it's like the least amount of rain we've ever gotten in monsoon season or at least like in like the last hundred years so i mean the overgrowth is going to be a lot less um i had a question so with not having the coin flip it seems like you have the option to choose your direction this year and the start time uh, what made you choose going northbound so i mean essentially the mad as hells is that what i said I like <laughs> we'll take it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean essentially because if i'm not mistaken that's the furthest north range out of the three right i think it's mad as hells four peaks and then superstitions correct okay i was feeling like as much pain as i was in from my ankle issues like i felt relatively good mentally and i was able to push well until i got there and then everything just started to fall apart and so I want to get everything he talked about, which I haven't seen yet, out of the way, everything that destroyed me out of the way, and then utilize adrenaline, the sleep I've banked to like maybe push through a couple nights for the final few nights. And then like, I mean, from Flagstaff to the Grand Canyon, the right. final 200-ish miles, it's all flat and rolly aside from the Grand Canyon. So yeah. I want to get the crap out of the way and then <laughs> hopefully use the adrenaline to push hard for that flatter stuff at the end if, if it if the overgrowth is not what it was last year i'm a tad jealous <laughs> it was extremely i i can't even put it into words uh this what i was running into like it was completely unexpected for myself i had no concept i mean it was so bad i mean on one of the shows you guys should find one of the updates find a picture of his his shins from the um what are those called cat claws mm. the, yeah, the cat claw they yeah. like yeah. dig in and rip you like like it was, fish hooks yeah, yeah it's fish hooks like it's so bad that he this is obviously before i decided to drop but just before i got to those sections he bought me shin guards to soccer, yep. guards. soccer yep. shin guards uh, yep. to wear through that section <laughs> When I when I even went through there and it wasn't as much overgrowth, there were there were a couple older hikers, just like day hikers that I remember, and they had pool noodles that they had cut in half and taped to their shins. 
like it yeah it's real they really tear you up it's it's yeah and there's the overgrowth is laying over the single track and then you have your random just normal rocks you know of arizona underneath that so you're kind of pushing through the brush the cat claws are grabbing at your shins and you're kind of kicking rocks and so you're walk you start, you go from being eager to set this fkt to walking very like trying to walk as fast as you can or even run when you can but carefully navigating those sections that um, could completely end your your attempt and so it, it got to be comical i guess in a way and i i had to try to uh create some humor out of it and so i, I know i put together like a little video for mike since he loves halloween and he loves thrillers and so i kind of like put together a little like uh, what do you call it? Some type of uh, psycho sci- psycho strategy of psychological warfare. Yeah, psychological <laughs> warfare, and kind of tagged him in and sent it on social media. As I after I got up to the the top of uh, Summerhaven, uh, when I was technically through the the worst of it. So, um, but yeah, that I mean, and back to Jamil's like what happened is that would be to I got up to 200 miles everything that even going through all that brutality i was in really good spirits everything was going great i actually came down out of the that range and lo and behold a little piece of just i mean i'm talking about i was on the nicest trail that i had been on the entire time and uh i had a, uh, a nice sunrise. I took a picture of it. I just got wrapped up with our phone, our, our update or something. Took this picture of me coming across the desert. I got this open desert. I was done with the I, island in the skies. Is that what they're called or something? They call them the Sky Islands. The Sky Islands. Yeah. And um, I was just so happy. And I was like putting my phone away while walking and had my poles in my under my armpit and stuff like that. And I just I caught my. Uh, one of the cat claws caught my leg and I, I tripped and I went to catch myself and like strained my, like a SI joint area and spent about 20, I had to end up walking to my crew and spent 24 hours at that. We were, I was a good half a day ahead of the FKT. So I was trying to take the opportunity, the extra opportunity to, to, uh, nurse it. And my wife's a massage therapist, digging into it, doing stretches trying to do some activations, go two miles. It just couldn't, it couldn't, uh, it just, I, 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 doing the math and looking at, I was going to, there's no running involved from here on out. And I had 600 miles in front of me. Um, and we were getting word about this and we can probably even go dive in a little deeper. We were getting word to our crew cause our crew was in touch with Mike's crew about some situations that Mike was running into. And with, the numbers not adding up for me it just seemed like the, the now the most important thing is to get Mike to, fin- to finish you know and so we we basically hightailed it up and joined his crew uh, to in, to be the best effective possible scenario to get him to the finish so yeah that uh, it was brutal watching both of you guys last year like you had both had such like challenging conditions out there right um current fkt joe string bean mcconaughey i just want to make sure we at least say the fkt oh, yeah. 13 days three hours i think it's 20 27 27 minutes so that is the number to beat um let's talk a little bit about your team this year who is going to be out there with you we have quite the entourage this year <laughs> um so we got ben uh, we have my truck which has a shell on the back and then my crew chief last year who wasn't my wife my wife's my main crew chief (laughs) but the other crew chief is somebody a coach a friend scott hiskey he has a big adventure van has starlink and all that he's coming back out and then i have two other people i coach who have remote positions that also have adventure vans that are going to be here for full time and then you know i have a handful of other athletes i coach that have reached out they're going to fly out for a day or two Um, we have a mutual friend in phoenix named Brittany who's going to come out for a few days and then, I mean, we have another friend named Brett Stevenson that's from here that loves 
the Mattis Hells, the Superstitions, mm-hmm. and the Four Peaks. So he's like, I want to do, if possible, all of those with you. And those are important because those are giant wilderness ranges. And so in the wilderness areas, you know, if you're not from America watching this, there's no motorized travel in a wilderness area. And there's very few improved roads or anything. So like those are daunting because you're out there like in real remote nature and there's no crew resupply for large stretches. It's not very well-maintained trails. Not a lot of people venture that far back. And so I think it's good that you put so much respect on those three ranges because they deserve it and they are remote and they are some of the toughest parts of the trail. I mean, it was so bad last year. I wasn't exaggerating it then. Like in retrospect, I'm like, okay, my, oh my heck. Like I was so sleep deprived. I over exaggerated the situation, but like, I, I think it was the maddest, maddest hells where I texted you guys, right? For my in reach or was that the superstitions? No, that was, it was the maddest. It was right after pine. So it's a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, like that section, yep. I can't remember the distance, but I calculated it would take me eight to 10 hours. It took me almost 20 hours. I laid down to take a nap. I woke up and I texted my wife from my inReach. I was like, I think I'm going to hit the SOS button. Like I was dead serious. And then I fell back asleep. She started texting me back. I'm not replying because I'm asleep. Oh my God. She starts freaking out. I believe she called Ben in tears. Like, right? There's a lot that people don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when and I showed up, all hell was breaking loose. <laughs> <laughs> oh Luckily, where I fell asleep, my feet were, like, I fell asleep off trail, but my feet were on trail. My wife sends, like, a crew to come save me. That's they would have blew right past me, but they saw my feet poking off the trail. <laughs> 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 and so they, like, woke me up. I, like, came to, and they, they hiked me out of there. But, like, like those, ra- like, there's a reason when I picked them up, like, my heart rate, started getting higher as I looked at those three ranges. Cause like, like in the moment I thought I was going to die. Yep. I'm, I'm not kidding. Like I was low on food. I was low on water. It was taking hours longer than I thought. Like those ranges absolutely wrecked me last year. So yeah, I respect them a lot right now. <laughs> but anyway, so yes, Brett Stevenson, who's from the area, like it's taken a big weight off my shoulders knowing that he's going to be there with me for most of it. Like a guide. Yeah, basically. Guide. Yeah. Who will help me sleep and no, you don't need to hit the SOS button. Like <laughs> I now know I'd need to carry three times the amount of food and water I had because yep. there was like nowhere to refill water, at least when I was there. So it's, it's, it's good to have the Intel now, at least. Do you think you'll be bringing some sleeping arrangements as through that section? Like uh like pad, bivy, bag are you gonna say are you gonna say something well i was just gonna say is like kind of me and mike have been talking i've been kind of strategizing with him and advising some ideas i guess he's saying is one of the things that i want to do is you know as helping out with the crew is being able to make sure that those that come out and volunteer understand the situation mm. with, with yes you know, so can, can you you just got to put yourself in the matazels and mike going to fkt if the pacer trips sprains his ankle or something and has to i mean it's like this situation it's like we want to make sure that they get out responsibly as well or we get them out and stuff so with that said the last section of every night or anything that has potential that we know that it's going to hit the evening what we're going to implement is obviously they have to have all the necessary gear to hunker down Mm -hmm. if mike decides because the new game plan because he hasn't gone into missing sleep he can review what kind of set him up i think what set him up for a disaster was right around the pine area where there was a couple spots where crew could not get to him or get to or he the crew could not get to the point where they were supposed to intersect and he was supposed to sleep that was like Mm -hmm. the last section and sleep and so he had to continue on yep um, making him miss a sleep. So now if we ever hit a section where Mike gets tired and goes, you know what? I want to sleep because that's, that is the number one thing that destroyed him last. It was to sleep is to avoid that is they have to carry a, uh, we got extra, um, bivvies, like really lightweight bivvies. They have to have a puffy and, uh, some backup batteries and stuff like that. And for the, for their phone that way, if he decides and he can just decide on the fly, I'm going, we're going down for two hours or three hours or whatever. 
they can hunker down he can he can you know send us a message and then um and we can update it you know have the update and everything like that but uh but that's going to be super crucial especially in those section in those remote sections that that each of the pacers understand that of what's at play yep and the the safety issues and on the sleep plan like last year the goal was you know hit 64 miles this day hit 70 miles this day or whatever and then when i'd hit it i'd go to bed but the plan this year at least for the first eight to ten days or whatever depending on how on track or off track i am for the fkt i want to wrap up every night between 10 and midnight Mm -hmm. and then wake up the next day between three and five so the goal is five hours of sleep every night if i have to stop a little early i have to stop a little early but then use the sleep basically what happened at coca dona like Mm. use the sleep I banked early on to be able to like drive a push at the very end if I absolutely have to that was I guess that kind of leads into another question I had but is there outside of that the sleep part is there any other like takeaways maybe in the last year you've gotten from doing Coca Dona 250 or any any long endurance like adventures just that uh, the cost or the what is it, the pros con list or whatever mm-hmm. of carrying too much water and not carrying enough water and food like always carry too much because <clears throat> I don't know if you guys remember I believe I was checking in with you guys up on the Grand Canyon or on the plateau over there yeah. but there was a section that was like a seven mile section where I was supposed to go before I saw my crew I can remember this I packed a bottle of water and like two gels and then I got a message from them saying that the roads were too muddy and they said, this is the new point we're gonna meet you at. And I pulled my app out and that was an additional 32 miles. <laughs> yeah, that was up on Babbitt Ranch. Just, I, mean, I know, yeah. it was after Going, getting into Flagstaff, yeah. Flagstaff. Yeah, yeah. Flag, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. So, that is not the message you wanna receive. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a wreck. Jeez. So, I mean, like the sleep, not caring enough stuff, like, you know, I, I made a lot of stupid decisions. So this time, like, I'm carrying at least three to four liters of water every time, at least. I'm going to have at least, like, 2,000 extra calories on me, like, because, I mean, I always talk about how when I do my low-carb thing, it makes it easier to not eat as much. And so, like, I obviously survived, but it's not ideal. Like, it took me that much further down the tank. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to deplete you and, yeah, push you into that zone you don't want to be in. Yeah. So, yeah, more sleep, carrying more stuff with me. And then the other thing that kind of stood out to me too, I've rewatched Joe McConaughey's video yeah. a couple of times, and at least in all the shots that they made in that documentary, it seems like he hikes a little bit more than I do. Like I feel mm. like I might have run and pushed a little too hard. That's just kind of the takeaway I got from that. So I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more hiking this time and less running, at least early on. I feel like the terrain on the southern half would help with that too. Yeah, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah. you're kind of yeah. pretty <laughs> limited. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if you're feeling good at 600 miles, you'll be able to run that last part except the canyon because you have just, as you know, like other than the mud, it's relatively easy terrain. Yeah, it's way easy. Yeah. A lot of dirt road. Like, yep. it's not technical at all. No. Yeah. yeah, it's super smooth, which is nice. Yeah. Is there a part that you're looking forward to most on the trail? That you recall. Yeah, let's talk some positives here. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, that's this nasty. Eight hundred miles of hell. <laughs> that's what like, we're like, there's some beauty out there, right? right? <laughs> I mean, as much as those three ranges sucked, they were absolutely gorgeous. Like, totally. what's the name of that huge lake that's over by the Four Peaks? Oh, Roosevelt. Yeah. Yep. Like that spectacular. Um, the Grand Can. I mean, I don't know if I told you guys this, but last year was my first time doing rim to rim. I remember that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that was amazing. So I'm looking forward to the Grand Canyon again. I mean, in all reality, the whole trail is awesome. Like, I am looking for, like, I am feeling pretty psyched. I'm way more psyched this year for some reason than I was last year, which I'm hoping is what's going to help me do better this yeah. year. But, like, it really is a spectacular trail. It's all beautiful. Was it you or you that just said it's, like, a really diverse trail in yeah. terms of what you're seeing? Like, just, I mean, like, it seems like every day you're going through something new. Even, I mean, when I was going sl- much slower, like, not, like, double, triple the FKT pace. Like, it's even every, every day you're out there, it's just, like, yeah, it's yeah. different. Well, I think it has almost as many different um, 
biomes as the Pacific Crest Trail, but mm-hmm. instead of twenty six hundred miles, it's eight hundred miles. <laughs> so it's yeah. packing it in. Yeah, very condensed. And it, yeah, honestly, it feels like it changes every mile. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, too, just this is, this is just from a mental standpoint, but like, you know, after the first two hundred miles, like everything else is familiar to me now. Like sure. I've done it. So yeah, that's providing some comfort and something I'm looking forward to, for sure. Just retrace those steps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I want you to talk a little bit about um, any other supporters, that, some brands that you're working with, and then um, I believe you're raising money again this year. Yeah. Yeah, so the brand, I mean, <clears throat> I love all my brands like Coros, um, Sport RX for my glasses, but, you know, three specific ones I want to give a shout out to are Speedland, who's a new sponsor, Spring Energy and Squirrels Nut Butter. They've been very supportive of this attempt, especially Speedland. <laughs> Like, I just barely joined them, and they're responding really well, really fast. Um, And then, yeah, so I am raising money again, but the biggest thing I'm trying to do is raise awareness. So I'm running for the same organization as last year, Rod's Heroes. They raise grants and awareness for orphan children with Down syndrome. And right now, there's a child named Johan from Latin America who he's going to turn 16 at the end of next month. And if that happens before a family commits to his adoption, he's essentially going to get what they call phased out, sent to an adult mental institution where he'll live for the rest of his life. And so for me, like, I mean, the more money I can raise, the more it would offset the costs of adoption because adoption's like thirty-five dollars to $40,000 for these children. So obviously raising money will help. But the biggest thing I'm trying to do is raise awareness of this child and hope that there is a family that can step forward to adopt him before he turns 16 next month. So I will have a link to do- donate to him. And then that link will also have like all the information and who you need to contact if you are interested in adopting. But like the biggest thing is just like try to share this kid's story because it would really suck for him to have to spend his life in an institution like that. That's powerful. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, and that, uh, like, that's the biggest thing for me. Like, you know, at the, so my wife and kids can't be here for this because my kids are finally at that age where we can't just pull them out of school for a couple weeks at a time. But I learn something. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, like, but my wife is planning on taking them out for a couple days and basically coming for the Grand Canyon to the finish. And so, like, for me, like, leaving my family absolutely sucks. I hate it. But, like, I know in... I mean, what, essentially from two weeks today, hopefully, <laughs> I'll be seeing them again. So, like, but, like, putting myself in that kid's shoes, like, he doesn't have that convenience. And from what I've read about him and from what this organization's told me about him, every day he's asking when he's going to get adopted. So mm. he obviously has that desire, and it, it just would be a sucky situation to be in. So How does that process work for people that don't know much about it? So the organization, Rod's Heroes, like it's a nonprofit. They're growing. Um, They have people that they can talk to to learn about this kid, to learn about the adoption process. They also have grants that they offer, and there's tons of organizations there affiliated with different adoption agencies, different grant-giving agencies. Like, you know, if you're paying thirty-five to forty thousand dollars to adopt, you can get upwards of twenty thousand in grants, so half of it covered. And so you would just reach out to this organization and they would walk you through every step. It's, and I believe they even have an app where you can like click on the children. It has videos of them, pictures of them, information on them. Like it's a really cool organization. So Rod's Heroes, R-O-D-S, Heroes, just reach out to them and they'll do everything essentially. Awesome. We'll definitely check that out. Um, maybe before we close things out, how are people going to be able to follow you other than like this show? <laughs> yeah <laughs> on mountain outposts so be sure to subscribe for the daily updates yeah this is where most of this is where you're going to see everything like all the other tracking is just going to be like a dot <laughs> basically so this is where you're going to find out most of this stuff but track leaders posts on my instagram too please don't spell check me please don't grammar <laughs> check me <laughs> but yeah we'll be um we'll kind of have a bit of a a cadence of each day we'll we'll definitely pull up as many photos and videos give everyone like that succinct report update try and check in with the crew um, if we can check in with you great uh, but we know you're busy <laughs> like you're you're here to do a job you're here to get this thing done so um, we'll rely upon your crew definitely for those needed updates so 
we'll make sure if we, we we'll we'll make sure that uh, we have Starlink. We'll be on online if for some reason we run into an issue. I'll make sure that I uh, remove myself from the crew just in time to get like settle into a, a place where we got service so that we can give a, a good quality update. Because uh, I know how important it is for those that are following along that tune in each day to really get you know live information and it really uh, adds to the experience. Uh, we really appreciate and we didn't you know we one we want to really say thank you to Aravipa and to Jamil and to Bryce and the whole crew for even hosting this this year and even last year. I think this was you know the a the AZT showdown was our idea but the whole entire concept of around doing daily updates and bringing really a live audience into participating was Aravipa Runnings um, you know their idea and through for the whole year that, since last year I just get continuously like people come up and introduce themselves and just tell me and I think Mike's had the same situation how much they enjoyed and the concept and like revolutionizing and just bring it into the house and this has got to be the future and all that stuff so to do it again we really appreciate you doing it again it is a it's a cost it's a sacrifice uh, and uh, I want I would hope that everybody watching appreciates that the reason why they get to participate and see this is because of of you guys well, appreciate that, both of you guys, for sure. We don't have to do much. We just sit here and banter for like a half hour. Uh, but we had such a good time last year. That's why we're doing it again. Yeah. And when you factor in that I chose to start a day before probably one of your bigger events of the season, probably doesn't help that much either. <laughs> Front time. Yeah, I think uh, I think your our kickoff show will happen Friday morning at 7 We'll end that, and then you can watch all the Havelina pre-race interviews right afterwards. And yeah. then I think we're going to – well, we will have not only Havelina live streaming, but then the check-in show Saturday will like be both live at the same time on the same channel. See? So we'll try and break the internet if we can. There you you guys go. are amazing. <laughs> and we've, got, uh, we've got Eric and Krista who – that's right. We're both, uh, they were going for the FKT attempt simultaneously as you guys last year, and we were keeping tabs on them, and we've kind of connected since, and so they're actually going to be stepping in and hosting while Jamil and I were tied up with Havelina, and then we'll take the reins back, and I'm sure they'll be they'll be showing it up uh, like throughout the shows. So, Yeah, and we've got some other great guests lined up again this year, a lot of former or current FKT holders on the Arizona Trail. We want to really make this, you know, as entertaining and informative as we can and now building new trail in Arizona and there's another new trail which you might have to put on your list mm -hmm. the Sun Corridor Trail which is heading across Arizona I think it's going to cross all the way to Vegas yeah I think it ends it finishes like on the strip yeah so there's wow. there's a lot of excitement in outdoor recreation happening right here in Arizona not just the Arizona Trail but a lot of different trails that's rad yeah you almost can like maybe try to figure eight it and do the Arizona Trail. <laughs> Make Bryce, <a> loop. <laughs> Bryce was just talking about no one set the yo-yo FKT on Arizona. Yeah, trail. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, find. So you know, hey, if you feel fresh, an extra ten days, or two weeks. Just, just don't say anything. It's a power move. You just you turn around. Ben's in already. <laughs> so well, uh, I was just gonna say real quick. I I called my wife this morning because I had a nightmare last night that she was pregnant. <laughs> And so I called her and I was like, I had this nightmare, you're pregnant. You're not, right? And she's like, you might find out when you get to the finish line. And when I said that, or when she said that, I was like, well, depending on what happens, I might just turn around and run back to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so, depending on yeah, the yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I might go for the yo-yo, we'll Ooh, see. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Ben and Mike, thank you guys so much. Is there anything else you want to add in, say, touch on before we close out this pre-show? I don't know if anybody might ask, but I'll just throw this in. Uh, I guess we're not doing it the traditional way like we were talking about last or that we did last year and everything like that. Um, just, and I won't be – I think kind of sad that I won't be able to really uh, pace him much. Uh, I just 
suffering from a little bit of a stress fracture in my foot that I've been dealing with. I tried to go after the Divide 200 and got 60 miles in, and it just mm. it flared up really bad. And I ended up even trying to pace at uh, uh, Moab. I got 30 miles in on the pacing part, and it flared up again. And talking to Jesse Haynes, the winner of the Moab 240, he suffered the, the very same thing. And I had planned to still go out and just – bear through it because it's not like it's it doesn't feel like it's getting worse it's just not getting better that's the sad thing and i can i can run like five miles with no pain it's a little irritation up but it's not getting better for long distance and i was talking to jesse haynes and he's just like he had the same thing he he handled it the exact same way as never getting better and he finally had to just hard stop let it heal and so We'll see how it turns out. I've never done the Grand Canyon. Maybe hard mm. stop will start after the Grand Canyon, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the and that's probably the 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 number one reason why we're not you know going after it t- together, and uh, so. But I think I think Mike has it. So. And I don't feel like I can top what Ben said about you guys. Like I really do appreciate the support. It's awesome. Um, I didn't remember last year when you guys talked about maybe doing this again and I was like I don't know if I want to do it again I don't want all this attention <laughs> and I think you guys made like a comment like well maybe we didn't do it good enough or something I don't know if you remember that I don't know, I don't anyway. know exactly <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not like attention makes me weird sometimes but at the same time like I love you guys I love your organization and your support so as awkward as it can make me feel at times I, I am appreciative of it so thank you yeah, and like our whole goal, we're not trying to yeah put additional pressure on you, um, but it is it's definitely fun for all of us to follow along. So we appreciate you allowing it. Yeah, and if you need to shut it down at any point, just let us know. <laughs> yeah. know no hard feelings. I just won't check in. Yeah, I'll you just don't check in. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You just the quiet. Uh, yeah, go quiet on us. Mm-hmm. Awesome, Bryce. Any closing thoughts before we? shut it down for the day so much i'm I'm excited to be back here again appreciate you allowing us to follow along i think we all like feel similar about the arizona trail that it's like a worthy thing to do it's beautiful it's it's life-changing like for me so yeah i'm just really excited to follow along see how it plays out but i think you got it in the bag i think it's i think it's probably pretty easy I did say I have one goal this year. Well, a lot of goals, but one of my biggest goals is not to complain once, Ooh. verbally. I can go as crazy <laughs> as I want in my head. Ben there. knows I like to like have pity parties, but I want to change we, that. Cause behind I, closed doors. <laughs> yeah, I'm not complaining on camera, but I do feel like that will affect me negatively if I complain as much as I did last year. So that is high on the priority list. So I am going to try to just make it as fun as possible. <laughs> what happens in the van? doesn't get discussed outside yeah. the van. <laughs> Man, this, we could do like a, a solidarity. I'll try not to complain either for that two-week stretch. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. We yeah. Get all the good Solidarity. Vibes. Solidarity. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you all for tuning in to this pre-show. Be sure to subscribe to the Mountain Outpost channel. This is where you can find all the updates each morning, 9 a.m., but tune in Friday at 7 a.m. Arizona time. You can watch this guy down on the Arizona border. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you soon.